Our special guest today is actor Richard Cambridge, who plays GT race mechanic Felix in the Sony Pictures upcoming blockbuster Gran Turismo, along with Orlando Bloom, Darren Barnett, and David Harbour, which is set to hit the cinemas and IMAX screens this August. Now, Richard Cambridge's career began to take off when he landed his first lead role in the Sundance feature film Distant Bridges, and he rose to fame as a fan favorite Peter Webster in the popular British TV series Hollyoaks. Now, beyond his acting pursuits, Richard Cambridge is also a co-founder of the actors community and app We Audition. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome actor and entrepreneur Richard Cambridge to the show. Welcome, Richard. Hi, Ward. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's it's fantastic. And you know what? I I have grown up on cars and racing from Formula One to Indy to GT to Le Mans. And here we are with this incredible film coming in August called Gran Turismo. What is it all about? Haven't we all grown up with that? It's a little boy's dream to be part of it. So it's partly about cars. Yes, it's partly about cars, but it's also about uh, PlayStation's game. Gran, Gran Turismo is one of the biggest franchises on PlayStation, but this this isn't the same story as that. This is a, a real story about Jan Mardenborough, who was a very, very good gamer, but became a real racing driver. Well, and you know what is so amazing is that every child, even every adult, you know, we love those racing games. You know, it, it puts us in that zone to compete against other people, either in the game or maybe online somewhere. And I think everybody has had that dream. Wow. If this was just real and Gran Turismo, the movie is actually based on a true story uh, of like you said, it's Jan uh, Mardenborough, uh, where you know he he was a Gran Turismo gamer, and then what he won a series of Nissan competitions to actually become a professional race car driver. That's just the craziest thing I ever heard. He did absolutely. I mean, he's a British guy that got really really good at, at, at essentially playing a computer game, and then Nissan did this idea, this concept of taking these young drivers who had knowledge of the tracks, they had time on the tracks and putting them in the real cars. And actually Jan, the real Jan, we met him on set. He came on set and he actually ended up being his own stunt driver on this. <laughs> There's some videos on YouTube, check it out on YouTube. There's some videos um, of him and, and he actually ended up in the car with his own name on it in the real movie. And then he'd get out the car and then it would be actually the actor <laughs> you know, playing him. I'm trying to fathom the the change from sitting there with a game controller or a lot of these gamers that do things like Gran Turismo have the pedal set up. They have the steering wheel. So they're in, in some ways, many of them have that, uh, the feel of the car, you know, uh, especially with like formula one drivers, you know, they live in a simulator to practice the tracks, to practice the updates of, of the car for that season, which because today, you know, F1 rarely allows real track testing before and even during the season. Um, for you, was it crazy to hear this story that this, this young uh, guy went from being a gamer to sitting behind the wheel of a full fledged race car? Crazy, crazy, <laughs> absolutely crazy, isn't it? There's a line in the trailer that uh, Jan said, I've raced this a thousand times. You know, the, those those simulators are so good at, uh, to, you know, the tracks, they're real tracks and they're so good. So these guys going round and round and round, they know the lines, they know where to go, they know where the overtaking spots is, but they, they also have set up their cars. So they know the difference between different tires, different weather conditions, because the game has got so good. The engine is so realistic that it's enabled them to do that. But then again, they're really then going from a, a static simulator without any G-forces to something that's going 200 miles an hour. And David Harbour in the trailer says, we're going to strap these kids to our 200 mile an hour rocket. Oh my gosh. So safety was really, really important. I, I was in the pits and we were changing wheels and we, we had a lot of training to make sure that we were really doing that in a safe way because these cars come in from 200 mile an hour down to 60 in the pit lane, they 
stop on a dime and you have to change those wheels immediately. And then if, if that wheel's not on, it might fly off down the pit lane. And there's 500 people down that pit lane. It's dangerous. So we went through a really rigorous training program to make sure that we could do that. Unfortunately, they trusted me in real life to do that on the track. And, and that was you know a privilege to do that all around the world and, and be changing those wheels for real, being in that pit lane with that pit protocol. It, it, it's real in this film. It's real. There's, it's not a simulator. You know, I, when I was reading some of the background, especially on your role as F- Felix the Mechanic, and you train with a professional GT mechanic. And what surprised me is you actually trained at the Nürburgring in Germany, which for all of us car guys, we, we know it as the green hell. And I went round it, actually. I went round it. Really is. That circuit is something else. So there's two circuits. There's the one you see on television if you're watching Formula One, if you watch things like that. There's, it's a bigger, wider circuit. But the green hell, the Norschlitt, is a very thin, compared with the Formula One track, track that goes around uphills, the compression on some of those bumps, the blind corners, it's so dangerous. And they call it the green hell because it is very difficult to drive and incredibly difficult to drive fast. And it's very dangerous. So some corners, you come up to a blind corner and you need to have been braking already. When you see the corner, it's too late. It's dangerous. Well, yeah, you know, all of us and a lot of you out there watching right now, you can go on YouTube and look up the Nürburgring and you can see all of the videos of people driving around and literally losing it into the guardrail, uh, clipping the curbs and destroying some very expensive, not only street cars, but race cars at the same time. You know, I remember back in 1976 when Nicky Lauda had that horrific accident at the Nürburgring. And that's when that particular racetrack was part of the Formula One circuit. And it was, what, seven? No, wait, no, no, no. It was, what, four? I'm trying to figure out how long that course was. Was it 14 it's, miles no, long? Right. Yeah, I think that that's, that's the North Ship, the, the big long one. I went round it with a professional driver who drove us fast round that ring. And we were going past we went past a smart car at one point and I thought it was stationary. I mean, we would go, we don't quite get up to 200 mile an hour, but we went quick and this, this little smart car, you know, like a little, um, you know, two seater with, you know, no back, no front. We went past that so fast. If we had, you know, we, we could have hit that hard. Uh, it was very dangerous. I don't, I think for them, it was more dangerous than us because they would have been looking behind that. You have to get out the way and you pass on the left or right very very dangerous and there's there's parts of it as well that have like a rail that you can go around so the drivers drive off the circuit so the the rail the the edges pull them around so they're they're not only doing g-forces but they're using the sides of the track to keep them on and and go as fast as they possibly can it was really fast really well, fast and that's not even it, racing well yeah and, and ladies and gentlemen think about this because i know back in the 70s when the long Nürburgring was part of the F1 circuit. 14 miles. Now think about it. And, and every major manufacturer today uses the Nürburgring as a test track. Think, think about how fast that in 14 miles, these guys can do a sub seven minute lap on a 14 yeah. mile course. That is literally insane. Now, Richard, for you, when you were in with the car, uh, with a professional race driver, how long did it take you to get around that long course? <laughs> I know we were aiming for sub 10 minutes. It wasn't seven, but we, I can't remember exactly. I've got it on video. I'm going to try and po- Do you know I'll try and post it for someone. I loved it, but we went very quick. Uh, but um, I was actually in the car with someone else who was in the movie as well, because there's seats in the back. We went around in a, you know, in a very fast M3, I think it was, souped up BMW. And there was back seats. And I remember my friend in the back going, oh, I go so fast, it's so fast, it's so fast. And I was like, go faster, go faster, go faster in the front. Yeah, really, really brilliant. But you can drive around it yourself as well. You can take your car around it or you can hire a car and go around it as well. But um, I wasn't keen on doing that. Not when I was middle of a movie. I didn't want to be uh, well. Out. L- well, let me ask you this, because you were taught how to change tires in a pit stop in real time i mean what was that experience like so in formula one there's 
four people, or four teams, one on each tire. So they have a very specific job to do. In GT, I think, I, it's a, a bit harder, that you have to do every single wheel and every single wheel is a different configuration on the gun. Everything has to be done in a certain way. I actually did it with my trainer. So every time I was on set, I was with my trainer. So he was handing me the wheels, doing it, because you do a team of two. So GT cars, team of two, you start on the front, you go round to the other side, you come back round, and then you finish on the back near side. Done. Arm up. Go. By that time, they would have refueled as well. On a Le Mans car, you just do one side, so it's it's slightly easier. It's a slightly different type of car, but the the cars go faster, so the bolts get jammed on faster. So it's a lot harder. That gun, when it goes, it pulls your arm off, and it's about three or four times as powerful as like an air pistol that you'd use in a you know regular shot. These are big wheels and they take one nut like that, one nut, the whole tire then sticks on. So it's not like you need to find five nuts like NASCAR. It's 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 one nut, which means you can do it in sub three seconds is the aim per wheel. But then you've got to put it on and you know pull it away. Plus you've got to lug the wires around. These guys are big. I had yeah, I, I had a struggle to do it. It it's tough. It's harder than it looks. It's harder. Well, well, you know, it's funny because I know that this year, well, or it was last year. NASCAR switched to a center locking hub because yeah. everybody kept get, getting penalized on the five lug nuts by dropping one off. But now just about every racing series has that center lock. What did the wheel and tire combination weigh that you had to pick up and put on there in an instant and then grab the gun? I couldn't tell you exactly. I know they're heavy. It was on the edge of what I could lift. But NASCAR, what they, what they used to do is they used to glue in the bolts because the glue would just break, no problem. But they just wanted to be so sure. So they used to um, put the pull them out and just let them sort of go and then glue them in for the other one, which is dangerous and nuts could go everywhere else. So the, the single nut makes sense. It makes sense. It's safer. There's one thing to do. And on GT car racing, there's a minimum time limit as well. So you can't go too fast. You have, you have, a, you have a minimum time where they have to stay in the pit. So if you're refueled, you're changed, you're done. You're doing the same time as everyone else, so that's always the benchmark, which is good. I mean, it's good that, that you know you. So you they to... actually have a set pit time because you know in Formula One you can do a pit stop in less than three seconds. Yes, you can, but in GT they have a minimum. You have to refuel as well. Remember, if we're talking about GT racing, you're refueling as well, and actually on Le Mans racing you're refueling. So there's there's extra considerations there, and we don't want to be in the or they don't want to be in the unsafe realm. So I think they just say, you know, you need you need to be within this minimum. But the eight, that's hard to do it. Now I don't only did it sometimes. <laughs> I was not a standard within that time limit. So uh, well, now I understand that you also trained in Dubai, and you are you're in a full fireproof suit. How hot was that? Very hot. So we we're in the same costumes that we were in the snow in Austria. So we were hot in Dubai. Actually, my only my only real uh, sticking point really was in Dubai when I really struggled actually in the heat because those guys do it day in day out, and I think they're acclimatized, and I certainly wasn't. And because I was really nervous about the scene, I think I I didn't maybe eat properly, and uh, I just I really struggled on that day to to get those things. When everyone's looking at you and there's 500 people there watching you, it's very difficult to do that for real. But uh, yeah, it was all okay in the end, as they say. <laughs> you know, well, what, what was it like for the car to come in, stop on a dime, change the tires in real time, and then watch that car leave just tearing out of the pits? I mean, w was it more nerve wracking or more exhilarating? Yeah, I'd say exhilarating. Once you get on set with anything, you're sort of in the moment. And that's the idea. You know, we're, we're, as an actor, you're, you're searching for authenticity you're searching for that authentic moment and i think that that's what's fashionable now with film you know you want to be living in the moment and you want the audience to see that we're not portraying characters hopefully we're being them so that's what i was really aiming for here and hopefully that came across so when you when you're in that moment you are presuming it's real and everything you're doing in the preparation and when you're there on set with the characters with the lines with the interactions you're imagining it's real and that that's kind of part of my process and hopefully that comes across on camera so the nerves don't come into uh account really for the for the filming it's more for the like you say worry of the tire is it going to be on is someone going to die as that tire goes off left and the car goes right <laughs> i think it was okay in the end 
<laughs> well, you know, in Gran Turismo, the acting is so great that when you're watching it, you and knowing and and learning, I should say, learning that it's a true story. You really feel the emotion of this story starting off building and then getting to that point where this one kid is chosen and to have someone say that kid has it that must have been uh extraordinary for uh martinborough yeah i think jan the program doesn't exist with nissan anymore but i think jan was sort of um one of the first to do that he was certainly the youngest and to have him as a british racing car driver and to have that longevity where he's still a racing car driver now and to have this movie made about him is is very special the the training program you know is is depicted and sort of dramatized in the film and and, and it being a true story it makes a car movie into something special because everyone wants a story you don't just want to go and see the the story of the the game i think you want to see everyone wants to see human emotion the human journey and that's certainly from what this is it's a great script and it's beautifully directed and it's a visceral performance with those motor cars and i imagine it's going to sound in the theaters i've not seen it in the theater it's going to sound awesome so go see it in the theater yeah i was talking to a friend of mine last night who, who who's also an actor and he goes have you seen gran turismo yet and and we were talking about it and he, we both loved it. And like you said, ladies and gentlemen, ladies, this isn't just a car movie. And of course, the theater will be full of guys. There is an emotional story here. And I love the fact, Richard, that here is this young kid. And, you know, it's kind of like, I think it's really normal for most parents where their kids are gamers. They, they're playing all the video games and they're like, can't you do something more constructive with your life than sitting there staring at that TV and playing games all day? Well, for a lot of, for some out there, they're making a ton of money being a gamer. And, uh, and if you got the talent, why not go for it? Everyone's got their aspirations. You know, when I was young, it was an aspiration to be an astronaut or to be a movie star or to be a racing driver. And I think now you know kids have other aspirations there to be a gamer to be a youtuber to be there's lots of opportunity that have that weird sort of aspirational oh, one day that could be possible and that for me certainly it was being an actor and doing big movies so this has really been very special for me well what was it like working with orlando bloom and david harbour they are great uh, i i did most of my most of my scenes with orlando and david because i'm in the nissan team so that was a real opportunity and to see them work uh you know it's 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 beautiful really i it, it's very interesting to see how a massive movie i've done a lot of small movies a lot of tv but not big studio movies and to see the process is actually very similar to how you do anything else but just on a bigger scale and that's been a real eye-opener for me because i've been like oh you know it is possible it is attainable these are real human beings these are you know wonderful people plying their craft and it's wonderful to be in the same room, let alone the same set, let alone in a scene with these people. So, yeah, it's a real privilege. And I just think that the movie and the acting and the, the, the finished result is a testament to how on top of everyone's game everyone is. Well, were you able to see uh, a bit of how, but let's just use Orlando and David Harbour as an example. Uh, were you able to kind of see uh, how they prepared for their role or prepared for the filming of that day? And did you learn anything in particular that you can take with you to the next project? Do you know what? On a big production like that, how they prepare is none of my business. They are separate, you know? <laughs> you know, you might bump into them at hair and makeup. You know, you probably have breakfast together in the hotel and we might chat, but the, it's a big production. It's a big thing that all comes together. So when you step on set, that's the moment that you do the scene. And sometimes, especially if you're, you know, sometimes you don't do the scene with anyone until you do it with the star you know that you do the scene for the first time on set so people really need to rehearse and a lot of actors in 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 hollywood and a lot of actors doing big products projects in the uk use systems and other actors to rehearse with as well and i'm, I'm actually involved with i'm a co-founder of a project called we audition that helps people do rehearsals 
and meet up with other actors online to run their lines before they take them on set. So they have that opportunity to interact with a human being before that camera rolls, because things are so fast nowadays, people, you know, they, they get in front of the camera and then that's their scene done and they don't get the opportunity to do it with a real human. So, you know, people need to rehearse and sometimes they need to do that with other actors before they step on set. Well, ex well explain, I, I have a lot of, uh, I interview a lot of directors, producers, screenwriters, actors like yourself. Uh, and for those that are just getting really started into the industry, or maybe they've only been in it for a few years, um, and you co-founded the app We Audition, kind of walk us through in a uh, in a way of how to understand what that app will do for somebody, because you just kind of shed some light on it. Yeah, actually, I co-founded this about eight years ago now, and it started off with a few actors in Hollywood wanting to meet up and self-tape with each other. So self-tape, a lot of people will know what self-tapes are. If you don't, it's a rehear it's a it, it's an audition that you would do at home. You'd record your own lines and then you have other people read the other lines. So you get sent a script, you read yours, you tape it, you have other people. So we're the world's biggest on-demand reader service. So we audition, you can have someone read those other lines for you over video chat. So it's like a Zoom system, but you can have a community of people ready and willing. But people use it all day every day for projects that they're shooting that day as well so as well as for auditions people use it for running through their lines before they perform them running through that day's uh, project whatever they're doing uh, and get coaching as well people do it for coaching regularly so it's a community of actors that meet up with each other to perform and because of the internet uh, and latency and new technology we can make it super snappy and the technology allows them to be as if they're in the same room. So that's just come about in recent years. And now I do it pretty much full time when I'm not on set. It's uh, Well, it's do uh, can can casting directors use the We Audition if they're looking for a particular actor for a particular part? Yes, we have auditions on there as well. There are auditions and opportunities. And we actually do a load of, uh, we, what do you call them, uh, general meetings. We're actually doing a, a thing coming up soon with general meetings and round tables and introductions with casting directors. We also do events around the world as well, where we meet up with casting directors and directors and have get togethers and mixers. So it's it's offline as well as online, but that's really done well, uh, you know, in recent years. Of course it's done well in recent years, but it's it's been my day job as well as acting. Uh, so it's, it's really useful for a lot of actors. I'm really proud of what we've done for the community as well. You know, people email us every day saying that it's helped their game, it's up their game, it's made them better at auditions, it's made them better on set, and that can only be a good thing. Well, how do, for those that are actors, uh, how do they sign up? Weaudition.com, or you can download it on your iPhone or on your iPad and sign up through the iOS app store. It's really good, actually, on your iPad because it's big. Oh, we have a feature as well, a real sneaky Hollywood tip. You can upload your script and it will listen to your voice and it will scroll with you as well. So when these big actors do their auditions, sometimes if they're doing auditions, they're reading the script because it follows your voice and it scrolls up with you. So they've got a sneaky eye prompt if they're not completely off book. And now I love that. <laughs> well, you know, because there's a lot of people who do auditions where the audition is maybe for a, a television commercial or maybe it's for a spokesperson and they have to know how to read a teleprompter. So, you know, something like that um, is definitely a, a big plus for them. We've got a ton of features like that. We've got loads in the pipeline as well. Yeah, they're all supposed to be just things to make people better at their craft. The important thing is doing a good character, making something watchable, making something engaging, you know, and delivering that authentic performance is what I said earlier. Hopefully that's what I've done in Gran Turismo and put that across. But these are all tools that people use, you know, part of a suite and arsenal, if you like, of tools. Well, you know, you being in Gran uh, Turismo, um, do you race cars yourself or did it give you the bug to do so? I had a, I used, I used to have a really, we got a hot hatch in England, hot hatch. I don't know if you use that term in the US. So we have much smaller cars generally. But when I was 17, I worked in a theater. I worked in a theater, you know, I got a job when I was 16, I think, I, earlier than I was allowed. And I, I uh, used to catch the train. I used to have to wait hours for the train to get home because I lived in the countryside. So as soon as I was 17, which in the UK is when we're allowed to drive, I got a car. And that quickly became a souped up car because I took it apart and made it a bit faster. And then that quickly became a hot hatch because I bought an upgrade and 
I did a movie in Golders Green in London. I think I was about 20 years old and the the car was out front and there, it was like a really fast for a young person car. And, but it was all beat up and there was a bit of paint missing and the engine had all blown. And I was like, ha, ah, who's is this? You know, found out whose it was. And I bought it off the studio owner's son who'd blown it up, towed it home, had it out on my dad at the time's kitchen table, which he was not amused about and uh, changed the camshaft, did all the tap it, put it all back together, sold it for a good profit as well, I might add. And uh, that was, yeah, a very, very exciting time. That was an XR2 back in the day, yeah, a Fiesta, souped up Fiesta, Ford, nice car, really nice little car. But I, I actually talked to, to Neil on set about cars and stuff. And, you know, I'm, I was really into them back in the day. I drive an electric now, so I, I can't tinker with anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is, is that here you are playing Felix, a GT mechanic, and you actually know how to turn a wrench. I could do that. I could do that. I don't know how they knew that, but yeah, I could. Maybe that comes across organically, authentically. I don't know. <laughs> I, th I think you've pulled the part off of extremely well. And what is coming up? Uh, any new projects in the pipeline for you now? Oh, I'm just doing the festival circuit at the moment with a film called Man Made, which is a short film, which I'm very fortunate to be... Um, I've been awarded some little awards for it, which is really, really nice. So that's available to see online, which is manmadefilm.co.uk, but it's also doing the festival circuit, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm also writing something, and I've also got Gran Turismo coming out and We Audition, which I do pretty much full-time. It's really busy, and I've got a young family, so that's a full-time job as well. Oh, I had one of the, I had my, my latest small little lovely Delphine during the filming of Gran Turismo as well. My wife has been fantastic, so I want to say thanks to my wife because she was amazing. I had, we had the baby during filming of Gran Turismo, which was a close one. Wow. Well, congratulations to you on the baby. Thank you so much. She's seven months old now, seven months old. Doing well. Wow. See, see to me, the first two or three years is the easiest. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, when they told us about the, what they call the, the terrible twos, we never saw it. You know, to me, it, it was just easy. Now, until they get, once they get that first day of school, yeah, things kind of change. But, you know, for those first few years, that's the best time to enjoy. Because to me, that's the easiest. Great. Good to know. I've got it all downhill from here. Thanks very much. <laughs> well, who knows? Hopefully, oh, you know, when the, you know, it's, I think, I think it's not the terrible twos that we worry about. I think it's the teenage years that we probably oh. worry about. <laughs> the more, worry the most give me a car so, wrench give me a car wrench <laughs> maybe, maybe you need to seek out some of those roles where you're playing a father of a teenager to just go ahead and prepare yourself now maybe maybe I, I look forward to it I like a challenge I do like a challenge let's see what happens I think life is more interesting indeed and ladies and gentlemen Gran Turismo is based on the true story of Jan Mardenborough the film is the ultimate wish fulfillment of a teenage Gran Turismo player whose gaming skills won a series of Nissan competitions to become an actual professional race car driver. Hey, it's every kid's dream, right? Well, the movie is exciting to watch and may even cause you to dream outside the box. So Gran Turismo can be seen in theaters and at the IMAX this August. Hey, thank you, Richard, for sharing your new role and we audition with us today. Thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure, Ward. Thank you so much. You bet. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for watching. And hey, I'll see you next time.